if if I think back to like the most scrolling stopping that I've done is usually women talking, um, and it's not always relationship stuff, but like I don't know, women just have a like a nurturing voice that makes you stop and like listen. Uh, sometimes you trust them, but usually relationship talk is like the the, the reason why I say that one is because they go into a lot of detail when they talk about relationship stuff, and it's always drama driven. Um, it's like oh, I can't believe he cheated on me. Like I didn't see the reflex coming. Uh, he used to like never text me good night or whatever stuff happened there. But like, welcome to the Freedom Chasers podcast, where we bring you interviews and discussions that share the stories, successes, goals, and dreams of real estate agents and real estate investors pursuing a life of purpose and freedom. All right, guys, I'm fired up today. I have on Luis Carrillo, who is an epic dude. And this is the kind of guy that you don't know about because he's behind the scenes, behind the big stars. Him and Ryan are working with clients like Grant Cardone, Ryan Pineda, Michaela Peterson. The list goes on and on. I literally was writing it down for like five minutes. But they just go behind the scenes to create videos, the videos that go viral for these guys. And so I get the opportunity today on behalf of you guys to dive into what does that look like? What are these guys' personalities? How are they doing this? How are they going deep with these celebrities to get out the real stuff, to get the views and to help them grow their businesses? So Luis, thank you so much for joining us. And if you'll take us off right away, what's it like working with so many high producers? What's that like for you? Oh man, it, it's basically a dream come true. It's like uh, when I was in high school, I was a weirdo that was, that was always studying marketing. So to actually get to work with some of the marketers that I was studying back in high school, uh, I, that was 16, 17, 18 years old. I'm 31 now. Uh, it's like I'm working with my fellow celebrity, so it's super cool. Amazing. So, so take us on the journey a little bit. You're 16, 17, you're studying. Everybody's maybe giving you, you know, teasing you, giving you some flack. Give us a high level overview. What's the journey from that to being accepted by these celebrity business owners? Oh man, lots of going to meet adults when you're young. Um, I, I was actually never bullied by any of this uh i was always kind of like alone just studying in my room uh nobody knew that i was studying this i just i'm like i, I was studying fitness then a, f a fitness uh trainer decided to be become a marketer and he made that switch i said in his email list and i've been since then been bombarded with just email marketing uh people trying to sell me stuff so i'm like ah let's figure this out uh eventually it turns out that you can build a a gym uh without needing like a big box you can have a warehouse so I followed this uh, trainer called uh, Ellie Holtz, and uh, he was like my first mentor online uh, for fitness. And then he also had some business coaching. So I decided to sell my my bed frames, do a bunch of odd jobs so I can afford the ticket when I was like 21. I was super skinny, wanted to meet him. So flew there, uh, didn't know where to stay. Uh, I just messaged some dude on, on Facebook and we rented a place together. We went to the same board shop, met the guy. Uh, learn marketing for him. He told me to start a YouTube channel, so I did because you don't know better. Just listen to the person you just paid a lot of money to. And uh, yeah. I, I wish I could say the rest is history, but I got actually the bullying happened because of the videos, like because I was very Whoa. skinny and uh, giving people advice uh, on fitness. Um, so a lot of people were like, what, what do you know? You're just a skinny punk. Like, you talk weird. Like, all these things I would like just, it was kind of like the when my now clients feel like when they watch their videos, it's just full of hate comments. So I was getting those since I was like 21 to 23. Um, kept doing some of these videos that also did affiliate marketing a lot. So uh, when you were, when you were in like this, number... mm -hmm. yeah. So when you were in this, you're getting the hate comments. Like, how are you processing that? Is it kind of like what a lot of sales guy do? Like, Hey, haters are going to hate or how did you work through mentally that, that <laughs> resistance? So I did what I don't recommend anybody to do. So I just walked away. I like two, three months, two, three, two, three years in, like I decided to like, I couldn't handle it. I guess so I stopped doing the, the YouTube stuff and I switched to doing more of a video, uh, focusing more on video, photography, uh, marketing, copywriting. Um, I did a lot of copywriting courses and, and the workshops. Uh, during this whole time, I've always been the weirdo that goes to, meetups and marketing events like not even telling any of my friends i'm just doing it by myself paying out of pocket i'm like all these marketers are brainwashing me with their email list so i'm like what do i know like and that's so it. i always got the message of like you're super young like what are you doing here because it's all like 35 40 50 year old guys that have businesses and uh 
but I mean, that's just normal to me. I don't know better. <laughs> so I'm like, I want to make money. So, so when you're in there, you feel a little bit out of place. You're 20 something, you know, haven't really started a business yet. And you've got all these guys doing their thing. Did, were you endeared to them? Because it's like, here's this young guy really trying to make it. Uh, what was it like being in that room and feeling like you're different from them? Uh, well, I always stood out. So I was always a compliment of like, man, I wish, like, I wish I was doing whatever you're doing at your age. So that was always like the constant, like reassurance of like, I'm doing something right. Um, cause it was kind of admiration. Like everyone, when you're actually getting every person that I've ever met, they're always supportive. Um, uh, the people are haters online, but like in person, everyone's like all full of love. Um, but that, I mean, that was a constant message. Everyone's like, I wish I was your age when I started doing my thing. I, I could have been so far ahead. So I guess in the back of my mind, that was always like, I'm doing the right thing. It was validation. How were you paying um, I was for these networking events? without realizing? Yeah. I've always been resourceful and then do a bunch of Craigslist jobs. I sold a bunch of uh, things. Uh, like I asked my parents, like, what do you need to sell? So I would just put it on Craigslist. I had an amazing ad that said, um, willing to do anything legal for a hundred bucks. And uh, <laughs> anybody that hit me and I just listed like my, uh, my skills, which was like building websites, working out, I can move any physical labor stuff. Um, and people would just chuckle and like, they hit me up saying like, dude, I, I, the legal part was just the hilarious thing. The, um, exactly that was right. a very good converting ad. Yeah, that was a oh, really good converting ad. Um, I am but I, I guess I've just, yeah. Keep going. which is ironically that like, I'm an introvert guy. So me just being, doing all these things to actually meet strangers or just meet a group of people in person was like nerve wracking. But it was always weird, but it's like, I just don't know better. Like, I, I'm, I was networking without realizing I was networking. It's like, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. And there must've been a fascination with learning, right? Like, I mean, every time you go to an event you pick up a new piece of information, there's an optimism that comes with that. What sort of like, did you have any vision of the future at that point? Or how was, how was the learning, was learning tied to anything? Uh, I mean, it was always that. I've always loved just learning, especially humans, how they behave. And selling was like the, the, the thing that I was always like fascinated, how much control people that sell have. I'm like, I want to be able to influence like they do. Um, so I've been studying personal development books, uh, marketing books since I was in high school, like anything from like Law of a Secret, uh, Psycho Cybernetics, really good book. Uh, all of like, not all of them, but a lot of Robert Greene. Um, I can't remember, like a lot of Frank Kern, well, he was one of my mm -hmm. first mentors that I really admired because he was like the cool dude that would sell you everything without by telling you, don't buy anything from me. Um, actually, when I was in high school, there was a marketer called Telman Knudsen, who I forgot his actual like business name, um, but he was a, a runner and a hot sauce lover, um, but he was also a guy that did hypnosis. Um, and to this day, I still remember on his sales letter, he wrote be careful when you read the sales letter because i've embedded messages in there that are that are going to persuade you to buy so proceed with caution um and i just thought that was like the coolest intro to a sales letter because it's already like preconditioning to get you in the mood to buy because it's like careful you're gonna buy if you keep reading um and i read the whole thing and I, i'm like where's the secret where's the thing that's going to influence me to buy it so I it causes you to it. read it over and over but, again yeah and i think that was one of my first early fascinations of persuasion through written text it was like someone left an anchor at top so i'm like all right that was just always like a tool that i could resource uh whenever it came to selling or, or sending promotions like on i had an email list for my fitness clients uh who later on i became an, a fitness coach and one of my highest converting uh emails was uh what is it the the, pol the police got me pictures inside um and that was just like, it was just a picture of, it was me going to the park. A security guy told me like, Hey, it's late. You can't be here. So he told me to go home. But the headline of the email was like way more hypey than that. And then the, the pictures inside, that was like the, the, the thing that I, I learned from a marketer called Jason Capital. Um, he's like, dude, that, that just converts like that secrecy stuff. So that, I've always been fascinated by like little persuasion things like that. Give us, give us maybe top five. You've given us some nuggets here. Give us maybe top five persuasion tips that you don't hear every day. Oh man, there's. Oh man, I'm like it's hard to like think of them on the spot. It's so it's it's, just, yeah, yeah. It just happens as we flow. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
you obviously need some like really clear. <sighs> it depends on the person, but if we're talking more of like the business crowd that you're attracting, yeah. Um, you just have to be a cool dude. Like the one thing is relatability. So, what wherever you are, in and there's like the when I I tell people like film in your kitchen because that's one of the most relatable places. Um, and the reason being is because they can know if you have money if your kitchen is massive or it's like has like a really elegant color that like you know how much that is worth uh or you have like a big island or your pots are like made out of who knows what material uh but like that is a really good place for anybody to be because even if you don't have like a really nice kitchen it's like a kitchen like everybody has a kitchen grew up in the kitchen has been in the kitchen Mm -hmm. um um so that that is like a a hack i guess like be relatable same thing if you film next to store logos like uh like ryan and i have filmed at chipotle before and because we know we're going to get comments from chipotle uh and everybody recognizes the food uh the logos the cups the food um and those are also props that you can use in the video while you're talking like i had him like smacking the burrito at, at like towards the camera when he was talking so that's another way for people to to drive engagement like some people were like why are you, why are you keep smacking me with a burrito or like are you gonna bite that <laughs> Um, and you can do some weird things, like maybe like one of our coworkers, she made a video about Chipotle and she bit it from the middle, like she bit it like this. And uh, all the comments were just trash talking her and like, why are you buying it from the middle, you weirdo? Um, even I wanted to comment that. I want to I want to dive into that a bit. So let's dive into like mm-hmm. the weird, you know, ways of doing things, getting the hater comments. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the psychology of that. Is it's like, hey, all views are good views, or like, how mm-hmm. should someone think about? Uh, you know, attention. So you should not care. I mean, you should always read attention. Like whatever feedback you're getting, hot comments are great. Comments are hateful. Like you should take note as to why it's happening. Um, the negative ones are when you clearly offended somebody. Like if you said, like for Ryan Pineda, we've made some videos about uh, using the words poor people versus rich people. People get triggered when you just call them poor people. Um, <laughs> like he said, I think, I think I, I, made him say um, something along the lines of like that poor people don't pay attention to their taxes or something like that. Um, yeah. And and then the rich people are smart because like they know the rules of the game. Like it's equal opportunity for everybody, but just like the wealthy people choose to learn the codes, learn the, the game. And all the comments were really saying is like, they have money they can afford anybody. So that that's why they know what to do. So it always comes back to their, they comment hating on people that have money because you can buy anything with money when in reality like some of these people don't don't really are they're not good with taxes they just know how to make money but that's not a reality that someone that's poor and broke is thinking about um but it's more of a cultural thing you have to know how the platform behaves culturally uh and i can like break it down a little bit into like youtube instagram and uh, tiktok they're all kind of different as far as the culture there um and that'd be awesome so usually tiktok is very group oriented so if you make a comment about a community or a group that might be uh offended like let's say poor people as an example if you talk crap about poor people um especially their behaviors like all the people that support hey it's okay if you don't make a lot of money blah blah blah, uh, or like you shouldn't be talking to people like that. You should be more inspirational and pumping them up. Um, you're going to have a, bu- a bunch of army just like ganging up on you. And like it's a very big collective group effort on the comments. And you see this in all platforms. You see one comment, it has like 49 comments under it and like 5,000 likes because people resonated with that. Or that's like the, the, the leader of the pack in the, in the, in the comments community. Um, which I'll tell you, if you ever leave a comment that gets the most likes on, on a post, like it freaking sucks if you have notifications on, because all you're going to get oh, is ding, notifications ding, 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 from ding. that post. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I did that for an iPhone one. Uh, this girl made a, a video about like, oh, this new iPhone got this new like camera update. And I just wrote something along the lines of like, well, it sucks that everyone got this update. It's like for like iPhone 13 people. Um, and, uh, I got, just got like the number one uh, <laughs> comment for. I don't know, for like two weeks or something. And I had notifications on and like everything on notifications was just from that single video. So it sucked. Yeah. Um, but, but what that does to a consumer or a viewer, it's like 
they've never gotten attention before. So they are driven to get the top comment because it means that people care about them, even though it's like artificial caring. Um, Very short term. And if you know yeah. that, yeah. If, you, if you're a little aware of this and you know how the community might behave, you can trigger, you can kind of arrange how you word or, or the things that you say. So it triggers uh, people commenting those. It's not always predictable. Um, I usually just tell people like they always they all talk the truth. They're not like playing the character. Um, yeah. But there's definitely there, that, that's where I come in, where I like arrange the whole structure of the video um, to make it say what I want to say and have like the emotional tone that I wanted to say. So let's let's dive into an example here. So Grant Cardone put out a video that talks about how you aren't nothing if you're making four hundred thousand dollars a year. And that got a crap ton of hate, right? So walk us through. Yeah. Was that a good video to make or to put out? Or was that not a good oh, video? Yeah. No, that I that was an amazing video. Uh, the majority of people in the world would not have the balls to handle that. Um, yeah. Because it, it could just, you can be the asshole. But it, that whole video was taken out of context. Because he was in, in a, and they always are. Um, but he was, but it also... It aligned with the, his values as a marketer. He's all about potential and like not staying, not playing small. So if, if it feels it's right in alignment with what he believes and it's something he would say like proudly. Um, that whole video was him talking to a group of real estate uh, entrepreneurs, I'm assuming uh, investors, who one person said like, yeah, last year I made 400K and he had been in the game, I believe for like three years or something like that. So Grant was just responding to him saying like, dude, that is like nothing. You're just beginning. Like you have so much potential for more. Um, and then his whole message about like, if you make 400K, like I would be embarrassed for that. Um, he didn't say like, you, it means you're broke, but he kind of made it sound like that. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And then, but the whole message was like, he always talks about himself. He's like, dude, I would be embarrassed if I got stuck in the 400K situation because he knows how much, how much potential in the real estate uh, industry there is to make way more money. So the whole message was don't settle for making 400K if you're in the real estate niche because you can make unlimited. Like there, there's like 10X that to 4 million easily. Um, so, you're, so, so, so what you're that, saying is getting the haters is totally okay because it was a brand advertising alignment with the type of people he wants to, to market to because the people that are going to hate on him for saying that are not his a ideal client. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like the the good thing about the, that message was that it made him like a meme. Uh, yes. That that is always one like it's not always predictable, but that is always something that we're trying to figure out. Like, how can we make this person kind of have like a core message that other people make it turn into a meme? Um, because if you can do that, then it just gets spread, and you become like that the person for that thing. Like Grant Cardone's like four hundred k means you're broke. Um, the good thing about that message is that. No matter where you are in the financial position right now, like you hear that and you either feel hate or like this guy's stupid, like this guy's arrogant, like how how dare he? But you might be someone who's like, yeah, four hundred k is nothing. You're right. Like maybe I can make more. Uh, or like you hear that message enough and you get like brainwashed to realize that like four hundred k is not enough because someone said it. Um, so it's like it could be a disruptor uh, for a lot of people who are stuck in like the. 400k is a lot of money. You just heard someone say, that's not a lot of money. So especially if you're someone young, uh, you can be very easily influenced. Um, and like that message might be all you needed to be like, you know what? I'm gonna go after more. Yes. So there's like positives and negatives because the negatives are just people saying like, oh, how, how dare you? Like that's the like, dream income for a lot of family. You can do a lot with that money. Um, but you know, everyone's in a different situation. There's no right or wrong. It's just picky reality. So when people are doing this, should they be trying to say, hey, I should have 10% of people like me, 80%? Like, like how should they think about positive and negative? Or is it just, I just care about the thoughts and feelings <laughs> of my client avatar? So no one's ever going to get 100%. I love you. Um, and there's a, a spectrum of polarity. So you have to be either in the, you're going to fucking love me or you're going to hate me. Like, okay, if you're in the middle, like, yeah, and the, and... That doesn't mean that you have to trash talk on someone or something. It just means that whatever you say, like you have to have conviction and the opposite of you being convicted is that you're going to get a lot of people who don't agree with you. Uh, and that doesn't mean that they're wrong. You just have to be able to uh, 
combat their comments or misunderstood comments because you only have one minute on the on the videos so you can't say everything so you can't like empathize everything and then i do try for the clients to always if i know they're gonna get hate from something they say i try to combat as much as the potential hate they're gonna get by telling them like hey like if they're saying like hey 400k is not it's not a lot of money like it means you're broke um then I'll tell them like, "Hey, let's soften up the message uh, at the end and say like, um, like I do know that for 400k, I know I say it's not a lot of money, but it's it can be a lot of money if you're in this position. Um, you know, get to it because I know you can. And then uh, then you realize you that 400k was not enough. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you can frame it as more like that's just one step in your journey. So you like um, punch them out the gate with like a headline uh, to create the polarity, yeah. and then you soften it up at the end for those that stay for the full minute. Yeah, if they can, and nobody does. Like, I actually saw my my host. I have a, a family I live with, and it was a Grant Cardone video about how he's uh, he was talking about his kids, how he's not gonna send them to 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 school. He's gonna homeschool them because uh, they're he believes that they're gonna be better equipped, and he travels all over the place, so it, like makes no logical sense for them to send them to school because they can't even be in one state every single time. Um, but my host saw that and she got triggered, not necessarily because of what he said, but how he said it, like very <laughs> arrogant tone. Right. And yes. she has a lot of, and, and she does, she's never had like positive experiences, I guess, with like wealthy people. Um, so that's also an influence there where she thinks that all wealthy people are like assholes. Mm -hmm. um, and the way, and her words were like, what was that like grand sounded controlling in that video and on her defense he did that's how he talks i know because he's my client i watched too many videos of him um but she just but that's a positive immediately him, right? saw three yeah because obviously it commands attention but yeah. it commands like an emotional reaction right away but what happened there is that she took out her phone she's like how dare he and then she just made a duet to it and saying like how this is not right like how can there people be like this so she only saw like not even five seconds of the video. They didn't give it a chance, just decided to make a response to it and post that. And that's mm. how, that's the behavior of the platforms. So if you can, and that's why the intro is what matters. Uh, like people might not even get to the end. So you should always be spending like 80% of the time on the intro is what you said. Even if you think like amazing, it's like halfway through. Like if no one see, no one makes it past like 10 seconds, like worthless because like no one is going to see it so so in the intros so you get a client like grant cardone or ryan pineda and you guys are thinking up the intro titles do they come up with the titles do you guys come up with them how how do you structure a banger to make sure you're hitting it out the gate so that is what they pay us for <laughs> to tell yes. them how to say and what to say um so i mean we research like the statements but they also have to be on brand with what they say and what they believe um but it's all based on rooted in like copywriting principles and that that's like the best thing to do like when you watch a super work commercial like how did it start how did it get your attention like i studied things like that uh magazine headlines like the fitness ones or like the like maxim and like all these like modeling ones like she lost 80 pounds by eating this weird vegetable like th those are attention grabbing headlines titles on magazines like same thing applies on video because uh we add the subtitle so that would like if the weight loss, for example, would be like this, I ate this weird vegetable for 30 days and lost 80 pounds, like ridiculous claim. I'm not saying that's true, but like if I, we had a fitness client who did something like that and can validate that that's true, we, that could be the intro. Um, for someone like Brian Panetta, who do, we do film with him uh, directly and uh, I can guide him on what to say, how to say it. Uh, I, He's uh, an exception where he doesn't like to be prepared. He just likes to like be off the we, cuff, just answer. I just tell him what to, what we're going to talk about, and like, he uh, flows on the spot. Uh, Grant Cardone, uh, we've only done videos off of his YouTube channel because he has so many. So we have me or, or another team member who is like looking at like his podcast, just clipping out messages from there. But here's a weird thing that a lot of people get wrong is that when they think we can just clip out a two minute segment of the podcast, it's like, no, no, no. like the two minute segment that you picked that, that got your attention might just be like the intro. Then you got to hunt where on the podcast is the rest of the video that will make, make it complete. So you might clip like minute five to seven, then maybe 20 to 22. And then maybe at the end, he said something that makes sense to be like the intro or like add more support to some claim that he said. 
Uh, and that might be towards the end of the video. Um, like for example, recently for Ryan Pineda, he was talking about his couch flipping uh, experience, how he made 8K there. Um, and then he was talking to Bradley, it was a, a podcast with him. And then I chose like three minutes of it because it, it made sense. It was his journey, where he started, why he started, how he did it. Uh, he cleaned them up, put a, put free delivery. That's uh, That was like the the big thing for him to get a lot of sales. And, but then five minutes into the, after that clip happened into the, in the podcast, he said like, I believe anybody can make like 10 K a month by cash flipping. And to me, that was like, that's an intro. So mm -hmm. I, if I had not kept watching the podcast, I, I would have never found that intro. So I just put the videos together. I just added the, the statement that came after before for the intro. And uh, I don't know how many views that video got. I think, it, got, it was close to a million last, last time I checked it. Um, but that, had, I not, had I not watched the rest of the podcast to find that intro, I don't think the video would have performed as well. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's like the power of like knowing someone that understands what statements get attention. Because it's not just what they say, it's how they say it. So he was very like casual and like cool and like not caring like yeah this, this can't happen for anybody there was like certainty in his voice but also like a little bit of like arrogance uh if you want to call it that like like non caringness like i know this works um and most actually that's another thing like most people are not confident enough of what they talk about that's why like they don't have the ability to really go into detail or like say things with balls like <laughs> like they're just too uncertain um but getting off track. <laughs> no, this uh, is, for, you're, for you're super... delivering some gold right here. So I'm, that's why I'm letting you go. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. And, and that's how my brain works, by the way. Like I, it is never in linear fashion. It's always like jumping all over the place. Yeah. Uh, and same thing goes with, when I film with the client, Ryan Pineda, uh, I, I jump on Zoom. Uh, we still haven't met in person to film. Uh, so I have, I just put my, let's pretend this is my laptop and he's filming with me. So, I'm Ryan Pineda and he's just watching me on Zoom and I'm telling him like, hey, let's say this for the intro. Actually, I'll pull out the list of last time we filmed so I can, um, so I can just reference like an intro that we had. So oh, this is a fun one. So a lot of people don't like it when he talks about Teslas, but <laughs> they get views because it's a recognizable car. Um, and he was saying that he's always talking crap about how Tesla has all these imperfections. Like they're, they're great cars. He doesn't hate them. Um, he just, he bought a used one and it came with scratches and stuff. And he's like, this is unacceptable for such a luxury car that I'm paying so much money for. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess it, what was a funny thing where we're talking to him, but like, tell him more about what else is Tesla cheap about? And he said like, well, actually I just bought a new one and they, they don't, it doesn't come with a fob anymore. I had to buy it separately. Uh, so they made him spend an extra 250, 300, whatever it costs to get that. Um, and you have to get all the upgrades to get like the auto driving or self-driving, whatever it's called and all these like cool stuff. Uh, it just costs money. But me knowing that people get triggered when it comes to car stuff, uh, everybody has a car. Everybody likes car talk. Even if you don't have that car, you always want to gossip and know about other things. Um, you kind of have to have the mind of like a, a white Valley girl from California. Right. Uh, just very, very like airy and like aloof kind of like, fun like you like to be around that person because there was positive but like some of the things sometimes you're like what did you just say because that gets attention <laughs> right um so, so part so of that you, you have to be go ahead huh? finish up i was gonna say like part of you has to think like that like very like a young i don't know anything about person i don't know anything about this person like i'm a 16 year old kid talking to ryan pineda i'm super curious all the time and I don't know what anything he says means. If he tells me passive income, I'm like, I don't know what you mean by that, dude. What, You're just constantly explaining and clarifying and, and going through that process. Yeah. It's like you have to dumb down the message so much, but I play a character when I'm filming uh, where I'm like a 16-year-old kid that doesn't know anything, and I don't want to believe you on anything. So I, I call it the annoying kid framework because uh, I'm always going to be – if he, if he tells me that real estate is like the best, uh, investment vehicle to financial freedom. I'm gonna be like, wait, one, I don't know what real estate is. I understand house. Uh, two, uh, vehicle. What, like, what do you mean? Where am I driving? Um, and then uh, financial freedom. Like, I, I'm, I'm a kid. I don't care about those things. Like, my parents were pay for everything. Um, so you kind of have to have some naiveness when you when you're filming videos with people to fill in the gaps. Um, 
I would have him rephrase all of that to here's how to become rich by buying houses or something along those lines because it's so like, more understandable. Yeah, so like some of the people we've interviewed on our podcast have retired or created retirement level income off of a single deal. So like if if we came in and said, hey, you that know, word you could deal, have, what does that mean? Right. Okay. So buying a property. And then, so you would just mm -hmm. keep asking questions like that until every word is flushed out. Yeah. I tried as much because there's also some le level of respect that you have to have with the client. They talk like that. There's definitely a mature audience. Like we don't want to dumb down the message so much where it doesn't hit the demographic of people that actually have money and will invest with them. Uh, but like you said, people have uh, gotten retired off of one deal. Like, I don't know what deal means. I actually had to study that word a lot because Grant and Pineda kept saying it all the time. I'm like, I don't like it. Um, yeah. Not because I don't like it, because it's it, it, more so because it, it just, it's not a common word that people just say. And it doesn't clearly explain it's, what happened. Yeah. So I, it explains I mean, nothing. That, and that, I can There's see no that numbers. now from, the, from this perspective. Yeah, because it doesn't say that you bought a house. It doesn't say mm -hmm. that type of thing. So give yeah. us, like, let's say we take this concept and expand upon it. So we say, hey, I know people that have actually retired off of buying a single property or a single building. Like, then mm -hmm. from there, like, how does it generally flow? Like, how, like are you explaining or are you just changing words? Uh, back to that statement, man, that would change it even more. Uh, like no one cares about retirement. I mean, people care about retirement. That's understandable, but someone young might not want to retire. Yeah. Um, so that, I mean, that would be split testing. I like to test a lot of things, but I would, I wouldn't even use a single property because property itself has many meanings. Could be a building, yep. can be a, a big mansion, can be a little house. Um, so I would do, I would actually do exactly what you said. Like one of the most viral videos for Ryan Pineda early on was how he bought a 10 unit apartment um for i think like fifteen thousand dollars um so that that was like the what the fuck moment like you bought a building with 10 little places to live in for fifteen thousand. like it, it makes no sense that's too cheap um and uh so to reframe like you can even say like this is how i retire by building by buying a i don't know 200 uh, enough, a big apartment with like 200 200 little houses or something yeah um it depends on the context, but if you say, like, here's how I retire by, like, buying one house every year, um, that would, that would be a little more understandable. Breaking down even more, uh, I'll retire by buying half a million dollar houses every year. So at least there's some context uh, as to what you're talking about. Or maybe you are you retire by buying houses that are on the brink of bankruptcy or, like, foreclosures. Um, here's how I saved, you know, people from losing their houses and became rich off of it. Um, yeah. And then... You would just break it down into, so that does a hook, has to get attention. Immediately, if you said that you took advantage of foreclosures or anything like that, people would be like, so you're talking, taking advantage yeah. of people that are about yeah. to lose their house. Like, yeah. it's, it, it, you're a bad guy, yeah. which you can save that later by saying, like, if I didn't do this, their credit score is going to go to shit. So I, this was their best option. And yeah, I'm in a position where I can financially help them. So I'm happy. I can sleep at night with a good conscience. Um, but then you would explain like, so intro, and then, uh, it's just steps as to how that happened. Um, kind of more telling the story. So if you bought a property that made you financially free, because maybe it was a 200 unit apartment that you, someone decided, Hey, it's like, I would probably go back into the story of like, when I was 27, I decided to, Hey, you know what? I want to buy a big building. And I, everyone told me, all my parents always told me like, Hey, you should buy real estate. You should buy a house because uh, you buy rent, like just buy, buy something. So I'm like, you know what? That's right. So I did some Googling or like maybe somebody I knew was in a similar position. And uh, they told me, it's like, I actually have a, a giant ass building with 200 units. Do you want to be a partner there? And I'm like, naive i have money i don't know better i trust this guy uh so i told him yeah how much money do i need to like put to like join this this uh this this apartment with you to buy a piece of it and uh maybe maybe the guy's like uh if you put a quarter of a million dollars like i'll make you 20 i'll make you own 20 percent of it and you're like shit i don't have that money right um so so now i might might go into a story of how you had to do some sketchy odd jobs or like how maybe you decided to be like I'm going to do overtime, but that was not enough. So I decided to do like a side hustle, uh, 
couch flipping, maybe the Turo, Uber Eats, maybe you hire a bunch of people to do Uber Eats for you, whatever the thing is, like, it's kind of like a story you're building. And then you come back to the dude, it's like, bro, I got the quarter of a million dollars. Here you go. Um, then maybe two years later, both of you sell it and you walk away with, I don't know, $2 million or something. Um, but like you, you're basically, I started by saying like when I was 27, cause everyone understands age. And then, uh, I was presented with this opportunity. So that was more like a relatable thing. It's like how you talk to a friend when you're at a bar or, or like at a Super Bowl or just hanging out. It's like, Hey dude, like last week I was at the mall and I was talking to this girl and she, dude, you're not going to believe what she told me. So you have to be very like casual when you talk and, and explain, uh, Versus most people that are in marketing want to do this. They're just marketing. It's trying to convince you that you should listen to me or like, I'm so cool. It's like, you're already cool by like making a video that takes courage to do that. But now you have to just be casual. Um, one, actually, I'll give you this one hack. because I think it'll help a lot of people. A lot of people having good success with podcasts. As far as when they talk, they don't, they, they're comfortable on camera. Um, sometimes you have to not look at the camera to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone's filming you with a, big big camera uh it might be better if you have a friend you're talking to a friend just telling them stories uh but then just happens that the camera is like there or on the side um being filming everything but like you're actually just talking to a human um that's a huge thing that i found helps for certain creators uh certain people that make videos uh we have one client the the creator brothers um uh, chris and josh so that's their names and josh is like uh, very, he, he can talk to the camera pretty easily. He's like just a natural like storyteller. Uh, but Chris, he's a, he's the other brother. He's a little more, he, he likes exact details and facts and numbers. So when he talks, he wants to make sure that everything is factual. So it takes him a little more thinking about what he has to say. Um, but usually when he just talks to somebody, he flows, like, like <laughs> right? he, he's not, he's not overthinking. And there's been moments where he tells me a frustration. It's like, so I'm, trying to tell him how this credit card is able to save him or is able to get him free travel. Like, I don't know how to say it, but like, usually when you sign up for this credit card, you get these bonuses and you get these bonuses, you transfer it here, you, you can get free travel. It's like, and I'm like, bro, you just told me everything. You just nailed it. Like exactly. Yeah. How you try to explain it to me, you just said the whole video. Um, and then that, that happened a few times when I was filming with him one time and the, the camera was just rolling. So I'm like, dude, we captured it. Like, don't even worry about it. <laughs> we got it. We're done. Um, yeah, so that's like a a resource for somebody that might not be natural on camera. Just bring a friend, you know, grab some beers, grab some wine, some whiskey, whatever you're into, and just talk to them. Like have a list of videos, and then have your friend ask you from like for uh, be the guy that gives you feedback. It's like, dude, I don't get what you just said, or like ask more questions. Like, wait, so you 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 bought a house? How much was it? Like. They, they have to do the, the hard work, which is pay attention and ask like for details. Um, but you most likely are going to say it naturally just by not talking to a camera and having all the pressure of like this in one shot has to look really good. That's also another thing. Like when you talk and you say something wrong, we can edit that out. You don't need to start over from the beginning. Just if you say, um, here's how eating these potato chips made me skinny in, in 30 days. Uh, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I didn't tell him how much weight I lost. Um, uh, then it's, it's okay. Just go back. Just say like, it made me lose 17 pounds in one month or something. Like it's fine. The editor can put it together. Love and that. you can also talk to the editor on the camera. You can also talk to the editor on camera. Like don't ever be afraid to tell like editor, like what I just said right now, actually, if you could put that in the intro, cause I think it's a more shocking intro, like, please do that. Um, or if you have some research that you know would like assist this, like if you say, um, most of America is living paycheck to paycheck. Just tell the editor, like, hey, if you can find uh, an article or some research that says, like, the exact percentage of people that are actually living paycheck to paycheck, like, awesome, just put it here and then keep flowing. Um, so you kind of also have to do a little work with the editor and provide assistance as to things that you know that the other person doesn't. Because um, yeah. most editors, most editors are not marketers. They can just make videos look good, but they just they just have one file and they're going to do whatever they need to do based on your directions with that. That's actually another thing we can talk about expectations from client and video editor. That's I'd a love huge that. thing. I wanna, that... Yeah. I want to ask one question mm -hmm. first. Yeah. So what is the relationship that you have between trying to make sensational claims that get people excited 
and making claims that are like people feel like they can accomplish. So, I mean, everything that the client says, like it's it's one hundred percent them. Like, there's no yeah. I only help with the let's get some attention here, but everything they say is like based on their own, their own life. I'm their just getting story. more details to paint a yeah. clearer pic. Yeah, like if if they say I became a millionaire after doing real estate for one year, uh, and I'm like, all right, when you say millionaire, like how much money was in your actual bank account? Is that like a million and a hundred thousand dollars or, or cause uh, one, one thing that drives me crazy is uh not drives me crazy. It's just part of the language. But when people say like, I made six figures, seven figures, eight figures, it's like, cool. A marketer understands that the average person doesn't know what six figures is. Cause it could be a hundred thousand, 999,000. Like, where are you in that spectrum? Uh, cause it's a, it sounds cool if you're like almost a millionaire, but at that point, you're going to round up to be in seven figures because all marketers lie. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But yes. uh, but if you're a seven figure earner, you're the, you're in, like, where are you there? Are you in the one million or are you in the nine point nine million? Yeah. Uh, huge difference. Uh, huge. So if, if more people could be transparent with where they are, and I, and I think it's also they're afraid to just not look as cool in comparison to other people. Like if you're only making two hundred k a year and uh, you're comparing yourself to people that are make half a million to over a million, then you might just say six figures because that's more comfortable. But I believe that if you actually own, like, just be clear where, where you are right now, because it's only going to get better. Like, you're not going to make less money because you're, you're hustling. You're hustling um, yeah. It's like, and it sounds cooler too to you for you to go back next year and say like, oh yeah, I was making hundred K last year. Now I'm making four. It's like, there, there's a journey that's making more trustworthy too. Cause you've 100%. been transparent the whole time. Yeah. You're giving that ugly before picture so you can have a more better, after picture, which is, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the director comes into play, which is the person like me who is behind the camera. I'm not just holding the camera. I'm telling you how to say things. So people actually like you and, and understand you and you're as clear as possible. Cause the game right now is not who has the most experience, but it's who can say it the best. There's a, an 18 year old kid unqualified is broke, doesn't have the experience you, you do, and you're the professional, the, the guy that actually has the results, like the real, real estate as an example. But if he can say things better than you, people are going to believe him, even though he's completely unqualified or has never done it before. Yeah. So everybody had to learn how to tell stories or how to talk on camera. I'm writing that one down. So take us into the editor uh, creator relationship and expectations. So, and, and I know I have a story behind this. When I was, I don't know, 25 or something, I began to work with this real estate agent and uh, cool, super cool dude. I still like him. Um, and the expectation that he presented to us was that like, you're going to edit Instagram videos for me and also my YouTube channel. And I overcommitted. I thought that, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I can do both. Um, but like a YouTube video in comparison to an Instagram post is very different. Uh, I, I, I was, I partnered with a friend, so he was doing the filming. I was doing the more of the marketing side of like posting the captions, writing everything. Um, but, uh, it was just like the expectations of like having those two things and me as a guy that couldn't fulfill, I overcommitted, so I, I couldn't fulfill everything. Um, but it was also the style of editing that like we didn't clearly exchange as to what you expect. Um, but like, all to say is that when you're hiring somebody, you have to clearly define to them like how much work they, they need to do. Do you just want them to add subtitles and captions on the videos with pictures and stuff? Uh, and if so, do you want stock photography or like you want them to go into your Instagram and find your own photos? Can you supply them with a, a folder of photos that are cool to use? Uh, do you want them to do research and add statistics? and data so you can like like for example with grant cardone i like adding um definitions for certain terms that might not be normal talk like if he says 1031 exchange i'm like that's a real estate term of like nobody talks Tax normal savings about those things and, yeah. yeah yeah so so i would just go on google find a definition and just put a screenshot of that for like three to five seconds so it's visible um because that informs the the viewer and it also makes you comfortable watching that video because you actually know what he's talking about as opposed to being like, well, word that I don't understand. I'm going to click out. 
Um, so it's all about retention at that point. But uh, but it's also about making videos that are easy to understand. Um, I, I like to always think in, in courses. Like if I'm making a video, I want to make it like a, so f- complete that it can be a course in itself that somebody else is selling for a thousand five ten thousand dollars and i'm doing it for free because i want my client to verbalize everything so well where like there's no competition like the paid competition some fear of <laughs> yeah so take us into working with all these very successful very driven guys with and gals with great personalities like what's it like working with them behind the scenes like is it the same as what you see on camera or is it very different it's just like talking to anybody else. Um, like if you have a friend and they hire you to like wedding photography, that's like an extreme one. But if they say like, Hey dude, I'm having a birthday party and you record it, like you don't want to screw over your friend. So you're going to do your best. Um, but like your friend's not going to be anything different. It's going to be the same. Um, you're just holding a camera, but it's these people just the only difference between them and someone like me and, and you or anybody else is like, they just have made a lot of money and they they have access to a lot of opportunities that the average person doesn't like brand deals or people like everyday messaging uh collaboration things like people them sending free stuff they're like glorified not glorified they're just like super rich influencers that are not influencers they're actual business owners uh but they have presented opportunities that influencers do as well so they're like walking celebrities but like the only difference between them and, and you is basically just money like once you i feel like once you understand that you're like huh they just made a lot of money like i want to know how they did it and most of these guys are so open with sharing everything which i feel sometimes like a criminal when i talk to them because they literally yep. tell me everything that our people pay for consulting for for coaching for courses like i'm just like so you made your first million dollars the first million doing what? All right, break it down into steps so I can <laughs> exactly. clearly know exactly what we're talking about. Exactly. So you did affiliate marketing. What did your website look like? Like, oh, what did you write on the headline? Like, oh, what were you selling? Like, how much was it? Like, I don't want any detail left out. Like, part of it, my job is to get as much detail from it, but it's also I have to have that curiosity to make a complete video with them. Um, I, I would say, like, the biggest thing is, like, when you talk to them, like, it has to be a respectful um exchange uh because like they they don't have time to waste like like i said they make a lot of money um and all of them they're not like you know they, they don't think it's not like they think they're the shit but like they are valuable people based on what they have accomplished um so i'm there to not waste their time i'm there to be their friend and uh, to extract everything we need for videos um and when i talk to them it's more casual like i always like to compliment at first or just uh whether it's about what they're wearing what they've done recently based on me watching their Instagram stories. Like for Ryan Pineda, was, I mean, it was the truth though. It was like his event, I, I met you at his event and like that event was so badass. Like he puts out really damn good events. Um, and I was just telling him how I'll, I've been to other marketing events and like, they're not as good. They're cheap out on like taking people out. Like no one, no one buys like a, a bar for two hours afterwards. So people can actually go and, and hang out and keep everyone together as a group. Um, so I was just, complimenting the experience i had at his event and then uh then it was just like go time it was like all right we're gonna talk about like it was just the super bowl let's make a video on the super bowl and then uh talking about like hey we can make some videos about how much you actually uh spend uh putting out events and uh and i know how much money you made from it so mm-hmm. he told me it's like yeah he'll probably spend like i think he said i don't recall it was 250 or 450 that he spent on that event uh and i was just like jaw drop like you you spend how much Mm-hmm. <laughs> and made um, millions on that event like, yeah and, uh, i believe he said he he spent 450 and made 2 million um yeah. so there was a clear roi from that i think it was for i would have to go back in the file i don't want to get it yeah. incorrect but but point being he, he spent a lot of money gave people a really good time a great experience uh and people supported by buying his coaching and mentoring and everything um but like had i not heard that obnoxious amount of like yeah i think i spent like 450 yeah. uh, i'm just like like the average person is not doing this like i've been to their event where they probably the most expensive thing was renting the, the hotel the venue or whatever and that's probably like not even 10k um exactly. even that's a lot of money we put out a free event and it cost us fifteen thousand, i believe and it was just renting the venue and like having taking people out for for restaurants and going out to a bar on the last night and stuff and 
we were not balling out. We're like, just let's, let's keep everyone together, have a good time. But it was mostly educational. So I don't know. That, that I see that as aspirational because now I'm like, all right, that's behind the scenes. Like nobody would have ever asked him, how much did you spend out to put a three day invest event in Vegas? Um, he, it was funny that he also said that a hotel forces you to buy the food. Um, yeah. So he's like, yeah, I had to spend like a hundred thousand in food just for everybody. Um, it's just part of like the the contracts and everything. Yeah, the um, minimums. Yeah, and I was just fascinated. I'm like, this is insane. There's this world of people like him who can afford that. Uh, like, I was just fascinated because uh, obviously, like you, like you're, you're probably thinking that as more as inspiration of like, oh shit, mm-hmm. there's like more out there. Like, it's it's not a limiting thing. You're like, oh, keep with that event. Like, I want to get to that level too. It's not big. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's definitely inspiring. So, what would you say, like, like not necessarily just Ryan and specifically, but just all of these guys, is their on-camera persona similar to their off-camera persona, or is there a big difference the between... same. Same. It, it's the same. Um, th- there's some people that, like, maybe are louder on camera, um, just because, like, they're just talking to a crowd. But I've found that the people that speak on stage or do a lot of sales are, tend to be, like amazing on camera just naturally able to communicate especially with a lot of details because uh if you think about it if you're on stage or doing sales like it's always persuasion like you're talking your your tone is changing to reflect the the emotion that you want the person to feel so if you want someone to listen to listen to you with urgency you're probably going to scream or sound like um I just have a tone of like, this is important. Like, listen to me or like, or this aspiration or something. Uh, depends on the crowd. Um, or someone like Grant Cardone, who just, it, it's always very uh, uh, abrupt with how he talks. Like, it's very, he, he doesn't trash talk. He's always just saying, like, people are wasting their potential. That's like, yeah. he has a very mixed uh, opinion from people, but he's a, he's a good dude. He's, 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 he doesn't know how to talk in an empathetic way. So he talks more of a, a desperate way of like, I just want people to be better because they can yeah. do better. Yeah. He's the challenger. He wants people to succeed by challenging them instead of like nurturing them there. Like he wants to yeah. push. And you he's so confident. Them. Yeah. And, and he's so confident uh, on where he is in stance with his message that like, he doesn't need to prove otherwise. Cause he's like, what I'm saying is, is truth and it's going to make you better. And everyone should have that conviction as well that, Whatever you say is like the absolute truth. If I tell you that you should always say you in the beginning of your videos, uh, I wouldn't say that, but like statistically, that is a good word to start the video with. It's like, you're going to be broke if you don't listen to this video. Or like, if you're not making more than 20,000 a month, like that's a new poor. Like in the next 10 years, you're going to be poor, consider poor or something. Um, but that that's one big thing in the, in the beginning of the videos, numbers too. Like always break down numbers. Don't don't assume anything. Um and that that's usually my job when someone says, uh, yeah, I put on an event last week and maybe we made a lot of money. I'm like, what the hell does event mean and how much money did you make? Like I need numbers. And and if you said like, Yeah, last last week I rented out a, a hotel in Vegas, I'm like, Okay, stop there, what hotel? Um and it's like you just keep going down layers as to asking for details. Cause I, I want Imagine if you're at a restaurant and people are talking next to you, like the, the table next to you. And if they say something interesting enough, you're going to gossip. You're going to like put your ear out there. Like, oh, what are they talking about? Because what they're saying is interesting. If uh, somebody says like, man, like Tesla screwed me over. It turns out that they're like secretly spying on you. I found this out because like I did the security update and they said, I don't know, there was some setting in there that say like, thank you for letting us track you or something like that. Uh, it can start a whole conspiracy theory. But um like you should talk so with so much detail so anybody can understand what you're talking about. Um, and detail also makes you sound more trustworthy because I can visualize everything you're saying. So I get immersed in what you're saying, which is huge. Um, Cause everybody likes stories. Like that, that is one of the biggest um, type of topics that you can make on your videos, just storytelling. And as opposed to just how to's um, you want to have a how to, but, have a story in there too. Like if you're going to talk about how to improve your marriage by never, how to not fight in your marriage or something, like, well, tell me a story about that. Cause I don't believe you. You just tell me facts. It's kind of boring. It's like reading as I go into school and they tell you the history lesson or just, just whatever they want to teach you. 
Like, I just need details all the time. Like, you're yeah. wearing a, a, a sweater with stripes right now. Like, I want to know what store you bought that at, why stripes, if they mean anything to you, did your wife say it? Like, yeah, that's good. If you're married, I don't know if you are. Right. Um, like, like there's stories behind everything, but like, you could just say like, oh, there's a, there's stories for everything. And I, I don't know if there's a way to like teach that, like in, in an easy way for everyone to understand. Um, but if you're directing somebody behind the camera, like your job is to always yeah. be the curious person is asking details. It's like, oh, tell me more about that. Or like, so you said that last week you traveled, where did you go to? Uh, what airline did you fly? Were you in first class or like economy? Like, and some people are not even used to talking like that. It's like, it's like you're an interrogator. And so like, you're uh, interrupting like the, them in the videos, right? Cause if they're shooting these videos, they're probably not thinking that they're flowing and you're like, eh, eh. So like mm -hmm. there, there's a the, constant like start. There, there's a, there's a, a level where you have to wait for them to finish their, their thought. Cause obviously they're flowing. Like, I don't want to interrupt that, especially if they're like super excited, their tone is like passionate. Like, I don't want to interrupt that, but I either take notes or I keep it in the back of my mind of like, okay, so he said that uh, he married young. I'm like, I don't, know, I don't know what that means. So I'm going to go back to that and because we can always, you know, or put that in the, at the start of the video where it belongs. Um, so if they're so passionate talking about he got married young and then his, it, it, it was not a good idea to do it that young because it was all chaos and like once they realized they were not making money that was like broke up she cheated on you whatever depends on the person um drama is always great um and if i remember that's like all right tell me how young or old you were because young is very subjective um it's like oh yeah i was 18 and she was 21 and i was like oh so she was older than you you didn't even touch on that like let's, let's add more on that so it's always um because that, that also attracts a different crowd like now you can judge people it's like you married young it's like yeah that's that's why your relationship sucked or if you said i married young i was in my late 20s it's like that's not young <laughs> you're right yeah yeah so you're really balancing details with story how do you know when you've been too detailed and it pulls from story like how are you gauging that maximum impact that is the, the editing is going to take care of everything. Like, I feel like you can never overshare. Obviously, you don't mm. want to make a file that's like 10 minutes long, like three minutes or under. It's like the sweet spot. Ideally, if you can, uh, and here's like another good trick too if you make a video uh, and you just went on for too long, let's say the file was five minutes, then either the director that's there, like it would be me, like I can just tell you. And one of our other employees said this, and I'm like, I really love the way you phrased that. But he said, like, that was great. Love how much detail you provided. But I want to challenge you to say that faster in under two minutes. Let's try again. And uh, the fact that you already spat everything out, I think it'll be easier for you to, like, talk faster, talk with the same details that were impactful. Uh, but that's, like, a really good uh, way for you to challenge your, your own self if you're filming by yourself. Like, just acknowledge that what you said was great. You provided all the details. You got it out of your system. It's like, all right, let's try again and try to see if we can make it shorter. Um, so if you have a director, like those are really good. That's a really good line to steal. Like that was great. Um, I want to challenge you to do that faster in, in under two minutes. And I feel like two minutes is like short, but long enough for you to not feel pressured, but short enough for the editor to have a good time editing because they don't have to remove a lot of things. Right. All right. So who is the most inspirational? Inspirational might not be the best word to use, but who's maybe the greatest storyteller on shorts that you've seen so far? Like you're saying, like people in general. Like yeah, not yeah. If someone wanted clients? to, like, if someone's like, "Hey, I want to do tons of shorts, and I need to study somebody to become the best in the world," who would you recommend they study? Oh man, that's a really good question. I feel like it's usually girls, like relationship oh. girls. Like there, there's mm. no really uh like a person that i can like because because like the the for you page works when you just scroll things and yeah if if i think back to like the most scrolling stopping that i've done is usually women talking um and it's not always relationship stuff but like i don't know women just have a like a nurturing voice that makes you stop and like listen uh sometimes you trust them but usually relationship talk is like the the, the reason why i say that one is because they go into a lot of detail when they and talk about stories, drama, especially if it's, yeah. 
and it's always drama driven. Um, it's like, oh, I can't believe he cheated on me. Like, I didn't see the reflex coming. Uh, he used to like never text me goodnight or whatever stuff happened there. But like, you also have to pay attention to the tone they have because relationships means you're emotionally charged, whether it's angry, happy, uh, you got betrayed. Like, there's all these good emotions happening that you can analyze as like the person's telling the story. It's like, did you see the anger or excitement, happiness, frustration? Um, so I would say like relationship videos of especially women talking about them is probably good. And usually women are, are young women don't use a lot of big words. So it's also good to study someone telling a story mm. without being extremely informative with their words is more just words that you understand because if you don't understand something on the video like that's an opportunity for someone to exit because they're like I, i'm confused i'm out um so if you keep everything in a very understandable sixth rate or lower level that's like a sweet spot so i mean like if, if someone wanted to do shorts the most ideal person to be their producer if they can't afford like an amazing company like yours would be like a curious seventh grader uh that's good at asking <laughs> questions that that's the key is they asking the questions that's that's where the magic really happens um and you need someone that like is there for you like yeah you kind of have to buy that person to a degree like yeah. uh like i have a framework when you have a director uh and there's three steps like the first step is like they have to know all your insecurities vulnerabilities and like the angles you don't like on camera like you don't like how you say certain words um they have to really know you in a personal level where like i know all your flaws as a director i should know everything because one that establishes trust between you and the person filming you and and two like they're gonna make you look good or not say things that make you look bad uh because they are aware of that information but the biggest play here is that is the open trust because if you say if you're an, an open book with somebody it's like I, I get you got nothing to hide then the other person's also feels comfortable talking to you about anything because they know that you're a good person that doesn't lie or it's not sketchy um so that's step one being vulnerable and like letting them know all your flaws especially your angles if you don't like how you look on camera or you're like my right side is a good one or like if, if you think my hair is messed up please tell me uh i don't i don't like if my shirt is wrinkly please please let me know um you do this enough and then the director or the person filming you eventually will be like all right, I understand what you're saying because it's just automatic. It's like a checklist individual to you. Um, wow. Also, like certain camera angles, some people like uh, a little like tilted down here so you can look a little smaller because uh, sometimes if you film from under here, like you tend to have a double chin and a mm -hmm. lot of people don't like that. <laughs> right. Um, uh, if you have a beard, you can cover that. But point being is like you have to be extremely clear with like, I like this. This makes me look ugly or uncomfortable. Uh, if there's ways for you to combat some of those things too, because you as a director, you're always kind of like on their side, but you have to call them out too. Um, and, but, but in a respectful way, like if they ate something and it makes them look bloated or something, and they their insecurity is like, I don't like when I look fat on camera. Then you kind of have to adjust the angle so they look really good. And and if they say like, do, do I look do I look bloated or something? And you're like, you're perfect. <laughs> like sometimes you as the director, you, you kind of have to just roll with it because you don't want that uncomfortableness from them. It's um, like when your so wife number one, you, she looks a dress. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. sweetheart. And that, that answer, yeah. And that answer like differs from on the, on the context. Like she might want to have fat ass and you're like, it looks fat. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So, Incredible. Or you can say like, it's like, it's, that's step one though. Like step two is going to be, uh, so vulnerability, um, I'm like blanking out because I don't really tell this to to a lot of people. Um, I'm trying to I'll come back to that. But third step is uh, you have to treat them like family. Like you have to like what a lot of people don't realize is that video people are they're like freelancers. Like they don't have stability. Yeah. Um, so they're you're just a project or, or, or a side gig for them. And yeah. you don't want a person that's just treating you like a side gig. You want, yeah. you want them to treat you like you are, if not the coolest client they have, like the only one. Um, so you kind of have to treat them like family by buying them food. If they're traveling to you, get them the hotel, um, pay for their gas, pay for their travel. Um, you, like you want to make them 
feel cared for um because a lot of people they're just like you're just my photo my video guy you're just there holding a camera and you make me look good and then it's just like a very transactional like you yeah. come here you get paid goodbye but then as the filmmaker or the the video photo people like you're you're always hustling for work um so if they don't if you don't have that comfort of like i'm safe whenever i come here financially like like they're always going to go with whoever pays them more so I'd rather you build that connection and, tr and comfort with them financially, uh, but always taking care of them. Because even if they say they're in a financial struggle, and, but and they're coming to work for you during the weekend, at least they know that you're gonna take care of like their shelter, their food. Like they're gonna be all that is gonna be taken care of. And then if they're if you build enough comfort with them, they might openly uh, ask you or let you know it's like, hey, this is my situation. If I'm looking for more work it's not you it's just my financial situation and there you can also be there to help them if if you want to establish that relationship with them um so that's the last piece the second one which is a very very important one uh if not the most important uh is always saying i trust you um like to, like if the if you're filming with the client and and, and uh, the director is telling you or the, the guy behind the camera is saying like um do you think you you're asking them like, Hey, do you think I look good? Um, and then the person is like, yeah, 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 you look good. It's like, you have to like suddenly always say like, awesome. That's why I trust you. Um, and, uh, you kind of have to always just throw that word around. It's like, if they made a video for you and they're like asking you, Hey, do you think this looks good? Then you can, you know, once you feel comfortable with them, just be like, they're like, you've done amazing work for me. Like I trust you. It's going to be great. Um, so you have to, slowly over time always throw the word around like i trust you and give them that uh responsibility and like that place of more of a leadership position like they're there to take control of this intuition and command you you're you're there to just be the celebrity and talk and be the expert but uh you have to establish that dynamic of like you trust that person they have to know that you trust them and that only happens after you telling them a lot of times that you trust them um and demonstrating it with the nonverbal actions what are the three steps yeah. if there are? So you've given us the three steps of people that have, you know, but, but from your angle to the client, like what are the things that, what are the three steps that you do for your client on the opposite side of the thing? That's a good one. I haven't really put that much thought into it as, as I did directing part because yeah. obviously I work with clients and I want to hook them up. Um, I, and I'll just like summarize those. So it was one, uh, let them know your vulnerabilities. Number two, constantly yeah. remind them them. I trust you and put yep. that uh, honest on them. And then number three, like treat them like family, like make it like finances should never be a struggle if they're working with you. Um, so those are for the director to you, you as the client, like uh, that was a question, right? Like you, like how, how do you prepare? Or like, no, I'm like behind the scenes, right? So what do I do? So, so my understanding is that the vulnerability, this is all the person that's being shot on the video. So if, if I'm, if I'm the yeah. creator, I'm, I'm being vulnerable with the video producer, the director. I'm the one that's trusting yeah. them and I'm the one that's making sure they're well paid. But on the other side, what should the cameraman, the producer do to the creator to provide the best experience? Like how do they get them to loosen up? How do they get them to be their full selves? Like what are the three steps on the opposite side? Okay, perfect. Um, so number one, you have to treat everything like a, like a first date situation. Okay. Um, like, cause you, so you have to be respectful cause it's the first, uh, interaction and you don't want to screw it up. So when you flirt with someone, like you're cautious on how you flirt cause you don't want to offend anybody. Uh, so usually starting with like normal language, uh, cause like we don't know each other too well if it's like the first time working, like, so I don't want to cross boundaries that, that might be too personal for you. Like, I don't want to right off the say, like right off the bat, say like, dude, you have such a cool car. I mean, that, that's actually a safe comment, but like maybe asking like, the, hey, how much did that car cost? Might be, depending on the person, a little mm -hmm. too obtrusive. How old are you? Um, how much do you weigh? All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like the personal questions, you need to establish a little bit of trust and report mm -hmm. first. And you do that by just like subtle compliments, like a normal stuff, nothing crazy. Like, dude, I, I love your office. Like the lighting looks amazing. Um like I've, I've been following you for, for five years. Um, you don't want to just say like broad comments, uh, but you, you can say like, did I saw a story from you last week? You were in, uh, I don't know, you, you were in LA. I saw that you, you put on a conference. Like, dude, that's super cool. Like, uh, 
Like I love it when people put out events like that because it helps a lot of people. So yeah. like you just like general, but like specific comments to them. Incredible. And uh, so that that's one thing to just kind of like get that comfort, nothing crazy. Um, and then I don't do this because I, all my clients already know this, but like if I were to start with someone new um, that doesn't know me uh, or doesn't know exactly who I've worked with, because uh, that's also a huge advantage. They all know mm-hmm. who we work with. So they're like, I already trust you. I'm already comfortable yeah. with you. Here you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 But if they don't, if they, you just have to explain like, hey, I'm here to make you look as good on camera as I can. No, not even like that. I'm here to make you like the best looking and best sounding person on camera. Um, I'm going to ask you some personal questions. If you feel like it might be a little too much, like it's fine. Just let me know and we'll like skip that. Like, don't worry about it. Because uh, the last thing is you want to, you want to do is to say something that makes them uncomfortable and now you have an awkward pause. Um, Or like you feel like, ah, I screwed that up. Like, and I've done that a few times. I can't recall exactly what the statements were, but like, I remember the feeling of like, damn it, I fucked that up. (laughs) But it's like, I'm a professional. Keep going. Uh, Actually, I did that one time. I I, I forgot my mic. (laughs) And uh, it was like, it was just me like, dude, the the video's going to be good. Like, Like, the mic doesn't matter. Like, we're in a close room. I can hear you well. Like, don't worry. Um, I don't make those amateur mistakes anymore. But <laughs> that was that was like a big like, ah, fuck. I messed that up. Dude, I could so relate to you. I mean, just in conversation, right? First time of us doing a podcast together, it's like it's like a dance. It's like a date, like you're saying. It's just like mm-hmm. there's just moments where you're like, dang, I wish I could take that question back or I wish I could say this differently or whatnot. Yeah. So, yeah. Love this. Yeah. And, 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 and if it makes you comfortable, just say like, I apologize or like – like, sorry if I offended, I didn't mean to. I'm just trying to get as many details as I can and then proceed. And then proceed, um, yeah. Love like that. Yeah, because you always want to uh, set the tone of like, all right, let's keep going because I don't want to waste your time. Um, and uh, I had a, 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 a guy that I used to work with. He was uh, the head of the marketing firm. Like, we did fitness ads for uh, personal trainers. Um, got him leads through that. Um, and he had a his formula for like closing on sales was always acknowledge and re- redirect. So acknowledge what the person said and then redirect the conversation where you wanted to go. So I've always kept that with me when it comes to conversations. Uh, like, especially if you want to say someone, it just stops, just say to somebody like, Hey, what you said was awesome. I love that story. All right, let's talk about this other thing now. Like acknowledge that and then redirect it to where you want it to go. Cause it, you are the director, you're in control. Like, they are hiring you because you're the expert. Uh, and if they don't know you're an expert, then you have to, you shouldn't need to prove yourself. Um, but like, you're always kind of in that mind of like, I don't want to screw this up. So I got to do my best work. Um, and that only takes experience for you to feel comfortable. Like yeah. if it's, if you're making a video in front of someone, like let's say Grant Cardone, who you've never met a person, you've only seen them in videos. You're like, this guy's a billionaire. Like, I'm every time I talk, it's probably like 300 bucks just like coming out of my mouth and of this guy's time. Like, I don't want, I can't waste this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but there's also a level where you're, you get comfortable with like, these are just people. Like, as many accomplishments as they've had, like, they are just humans like you and I. My goal is for you to be a really good friend with you where, where you want to bring me over to your house and have fun. Like, that is kind of like the, the comfort level you should have with the client. Cause, they should hit you up with ideas too later on of like, Hey, I just great filming session. Like, Hey, I was thinking for next time we should do this or like, Hey, I just did this. I just bought this thing. Do you think it might be a good idea to make a video on that? Um, and then they, they're always consulting you. Cause like you are the, the, the guy that makes them look good. Um, so treat it like a first date, like build a little report. And once you have that trust, um, then you can start getting a little more personal. And you kind of have to read the room. You have to read their body language to see how comfortable they are. Um, and always provide examples first. For example, if if you want like a, if the person's saying like, so I have seven cars and you're like, well, that's a lot of cars. Um, mm-hmm. And they they just say, yeah, they're all like, uh, uh, they're all, they're all uh, luxury cars. I'm like, all right, tell me well, what are they? And they're probably, that's a simple answer. They'll be like, so I have Ferrari, I have two Lambos blah, 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 and McLaren, and you're like, sick, how much, uh, how much do they cost? Um, and then at that point, at that point, they might stumble, um, 
cars is probably easier because a lot of people like to flex those. Yeah, for um, sure. But like doing doing math, what, what I found for a lot of our clients is like they don't know what it is to be poor anymore. <laughs> so when I ask price information on stuff, like uh, I know, oh Ryan Panetta, we were talking with him and uh, he just pulled out a a backpack, a Tumi backpack, and uh, I know those are like four to eight hundred dollars or maybe over a thousand depending on the bag and he said like dude i love this backpack i've had it for years uh i could have gotten i was gonna buy a louis vuitton bag but like i'm like i don't want to spend three grand on that because i have this one and it just works just as well um and i was asking like so how much did it cost and he's like i don't know dude let me google it because <laughs> uh that, that's the pattern with every single client that i have like they made so much money were normal expenses like putting gas insurance cost clothing how much they have like they don't think about those things anymore they're not at at that level where like spending a thousand two thousand dollars on something is going to hit them so it's like you going to mcdonald's you're not going to worry about like oh so the i spent 10 bucks bucks, it's it's not going to do anything to hurt you yeah yeah and i I know yeah there's that, that's like the relative thing with, with clients, like their income is so high where sometimes you're talking and one details and they can't provide them because they just don't know. If, you, if they say like, yeah, I remodeled my house and like I, all the carpets were changed. You're like, how much does that cost? Um, they're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, <I'm... laughs> my bookkeeper took care of it. <laughs> yeah. They usually have people too. So it helps if you as the guy behind the camera can do your research um or give them some some assistance of like you think like if it was like a carpet renovation then maybe you google that it's like so the average is like let's say two thousand dollars he's like you think you spend like around two grand or something and then he might be like no actually we had some ones important from europe or some fancy stuff uh so it was way more than that like that always happens sometimes they get like cool stuff that like you didn't know existed or was needed um yeah, exactly. <laughs> like one of our clients onyx and, yeah like one of our clients onyx and gall he's like yeah, so I like everyone always takes selfies with my with my toilets, and I'm like, what kind of toilets are there? How cool are they? He's like, oh, they're like, they they automatically stand like the seats fills up, it like heats you up if you need that. It has a bidet in there, blah blah. And uh, how, how much how much were those? He's like, ah, I think we pay like five thousand. No, actually, no, they were like fifteen thousand or something like that each of them. And I'm like, each of them? That's an obnoxious amount of money for toilets. Right, uh, he probably I, has I think it was either five or house. fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Well, he said, like, they were so cool. Everyone loved them that I put one in every room. Um, so he spent, I don't know, like 60 to 100 grand on just toilets. Um, so cool. And that's just one of the fancy things in his house. But it was one of those where he was aware of how much it cost because 15000 is not a lot of bit of money for toilets. <laughs> but had he not been part of the transactions there, like, he might have been like, I don't know, my designer did it. Uh, and I just told them to buy more. So they might be a little disconnected with those financial roles. Um, but uh, for right, that's, that's for details. If not, do your research. Like if if they say like, yeah, I just popped my tire like last week on, in my Lambo, uh, you might think that's not a big deal. But like those fixing those luxury cars, they're not, they're not cheap. Mm-hmm. Like one of our clients told me that uh, I think to change like one light from a Lambo, I think it was a Lambo or Ferrari, it's like three grand. Um, or something ridiculous like that. Um, so it's like, just give me the details. Um, yeah. Oil change is like more expensive. Um, so that's where like you being curious, but also informed with like being able to research stuff on your own uh, helps you a lot, uh, especially if you're already coming in with a list of topics that you want to talk about. And that's something we do for our clients. We always have the topic list of ideas. And a lot of those I gather just through watching their content or their podcast. And I just take notes on like, we can make a video on this. If they say, like Ryan Pineda, he was a former uh, baseball player. I'm like, how did it feel to be a baseball player? How much did they get paid? And he's like, oh, 1200 I'm like, well, that's freaking miserable. He can't even survive on that. Yeah, exactly. So right. we made multiple videos on that. Yeah. But it's just do you and the, you doing as much research as possible. So when you talk to the client, it's not just, uh, you're not just relying on them doing everything because most of them have never spoken directly to camera. They've been interviewed. Or if they make content, they have a team that guides them or they already have bullet points of the main things they're going to cover. Some of them like to script everything out. Like everyone's different. I, I'm, uh, My team and I were very like, 
go with the flow. Like we have topics, like or prepare it, but like we're ready to throw them away <laughs> like, at right. any moment. Start over. They're like, yeah, and the, they're just like a starting point. We're prepared, makes the, the client feel comfortable, especially someone I would like to know ahead, like what's in our mind for for the filming session and they'll tell us like, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, I don't know much about this subject. So let's skip it. Or like, if they say something, maybe the way we wrote it, like maybe it's like how to pay less taxes. They're like, ah, oh, actually let's, uh, let's just talk about one thing about taxes. Maybe how I saved a hundred thousand taxes, like my first year in business or something. Um, it's also one big thing that a lot of people don't know. It's like, these are big people, so they could get audited for anything they say online. Mm-hmm. So it, that's also having information that they tell us, and we make sure that we don't put out information that we might bite them up in the ass later on, because um, that is that was a guideline they gave us. Uh, or certain people just don't want to talk about certain topics, like let's say marriage, or maybe if they had, maybe if they uh, maybe they're divorced or something, they don't want to talk about maybe having kids or like the divorce itself. So whatever they're prepared to talk about, we just stick to that. And everything else is like, they just say no. And you're like, all right, we'll skip it. Mm-hmm. How many videos are you trying to get with them in a session? Like just one, or are you trying to get 20 or 30? The the goal always, depending on the, the filming session length, uh, if we have a two hour session, which is like a very quick one, um, pushing it would be like 30 videos. And it depends on how much, report you established with the client um but uh we just came back from utah we had three full days with the client the first day we were we just hanged out had dinner really got to know them um they built a, a chewing gum company called epic that prevents cavities cavities um so i'm like that's super dope so we can definitely talk about a lot of dental related dentists cavity stuff like mouth stuff like brushing teeth and stuff and he can educate me on what's what's this flossing needed like why chew gum to prevent cavity what does your gum do differently than other people it's like uh, i saw has salitol which is a, a bacteria f- uh, fighting sugar basically but point being is that we understood the product great product it's like now what makes you cool it's like well there are a couple um he hired his wife to be the operator they work together um he used to do a lot of consulting back in the day. I'm like, what the hell is consulting? Nobody knows what that is. Um, and he's like, yeah, actually, I don't even know. Like, it's a, it's a, <laughs> right. it's a, it's a job where you're overpaid. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, let's make some videos on that. Because I feel like that word gets thrown around. And, but really, no one no one really knows what it is. Um, and he just described that. I said, you're just like the middle man. Like, the client is charging these people, like, five times more than what you're making. You're making a lot of money. But they're paying way way more for them to send you and you're just like the face of that interaction um that's like one aspect of it but you're there to solve problems mostly um so we talked about that they're into like fine dining we like to eat to restaurants a lot so it's like that just happened just by me hanging out with them for going out to dinner having some good steak and they're just good hospitable people so they're like an open book too um and they, they knew of us uh for just seeing our clients so they're like we just want to work with you guys we want to look like them so make us yeah. look cool, cool uh we went to their to their warehouse where they do all the products that day um the, we saw their office and they explained a little bit of what they do behind the scenes uh and it was just cool to see like this is real it's like big ass office no employees were there because it was the weekend um the show was like a little bit of what they put all the boxes for the gum and stuff um so first day is always like seeing the reality of this person like even their house like they had a really cool looking house they uh they built it themselves um and it was just like oh so these guys clearly like about like like big things they can afford those things he had a nice mercedes um it's just like taking notes as to like in a very like uh abstract way like taking away their their, how good they are as humans like all their toys or all their the processions like the the things that most people are like well your toys don't define you or like the things you, you your materials don't define you but it's like in this case that is the what people see first glance mm. so we have to take into account into like all the material stuff that you have because that's what makes a good background what can we talk about you can afford certain things i have a joke with ryan where 
it's not even a joke. It's real. It's like if you want to really get to know somebody, like just look at the bank statement uh, for like the last thirty days, and you'll see what they spend money on, what they pay for. Uh, like certain expenses will maybe they're into clothing, uh, or maybe they're into food. Like you'll know they're off right off the bat from just looking at finances. Um, so that, I mean. I've never asked for that, but if I could, that would be like an amazing resource where someone totally. just gives me access to their bank account. Um, Print out but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, I mean, it could even be as simple as like, um, just like looking at the last 30 days of transactions, if they use something like Mint, or I think like the on, on their on the iPhone, like, like if you use the Apple card, like they break into categories. So even just talking about like, what are like the biggest categories in your Apple wallet? Like that might be like a, non-intrusive uh question that is not directly asking like how much did you spend last month on on everything because some of these people don't even know yeah, <laughs> like right just yeah but that uh you always have to ask questions in a respectful but also kind of ballsy way where you're like the phone's going crazy yeah <laughs> you, you just have to ask you have to ask uh like a friend like uh, that's kind of like the best way to phrase it. Like if, like if, like if I ask you right now, like, oh, who's who's calling you? Um, like we've already talked for like over thirty minutes, so like there's a little bit of report that you could probably tell me, like, oh, it's my wife or or something. Yeah. Um, but like something like if you just saw that saw that in the setting filming with somebody, you're like, just, just let it happen. No need to ask about that. It's probably a business. Yeah. So very very similar to sales, just understanding understanding where things are at. And sometimes asking those details can be positive because it shows the person you're working with that you you believe there's trust. But if you're too early, obviously it can cause some problems. Yeah, or like even in, in the phone example, if the phone rings while you're filming with somebody, uh, you can be like, hey, if you need to take that, that's totally cool. And they'll be like, no, don't worry. Like I'm here for you. Or like, they'll be like, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take this because it's like, I gotta call my, my landlord or whatever or something. Um, like it depends on the context, but like, that could also be a, a like just good etiquette, like when you're talking yeah. to somebody, just to be yeah. respectful. Um, but you also don't want to waste time. So, but behind the scenes, uh, I want to add more because I have really haven't had the time to think about like what goes behind the scenes. Because like, dude, I you're just, just delivering it. so um, much growth. Yeah, just keep going. Um, the other thing would be just having an ongoing list of topics for the client. Um, like, uh, where's it? Like, I mean, it's gonna be hard to see here, but like for Ryan Pineda, I just have like a big list of of just things in there. Just mm -hmm. things from his podcast, things I heard him say. If I look at his Instagram, the captions, the stories, like we made a silly video and he was like, he always jokes with us. It's like, you guys make me do the silly videos. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the ones that I would people like, like we made him do a video about how to make the perfect poached egg. Yeah, which is ridiculous. But he's like, yeah, I've been posting my breakfast on Instagram all the time, and people like always compliment uh, what I'm putting there. And the, people keep asking me like, hey, I love the eggs; those are great. I'm gonna make those. Uh, so I'm like, all right, let's make the recipe because uh, uh, we made a recipe video a few months back, and it did really well too. Um, so I'm like, let's. You're gonna become the king of breakfast now, the king of eggs. <laughs> yeah. um, so. But it was just funny to also see the change in his tone and excitement when he was talking about a subject that was more, he's a big foodie. Um, so knowing that if we talk about food in general, like he kind of gets more lit up and like it's easy for him to flow um, versus if we're talking about maybe a subject like taxes where maybe it, it needs a little bit of research uh, to make sure like the codes are up to date and all this stuff. Um, but that's also a, a strategy. Once you've done like maybe one or two filming sessions with the clients uh, and you know enough about their personality, you kind of, you, if you start with the topics where they're more comfortable, uh, that puts them in a better mood too, and they can flow more. So they're yeah. used to just talking faster. So it's good to have like maybe one or one to three videos where you're like, these are their strengths. Um, like in Ryan Pineda, him talking about baseball, it's like easy Him talking about, uh, him talking about like food in general because he's in Vegas and he's a big foodie like steak eggs uh, his diets and stuff like that that's pretty easy for him to flow um, and it's also fun because a lot of people don't ask him about those things um, so they feel like oh someone thinks this is cool too nice um, if the person you're talking to is big into fa into fashion like maybe talking about like uh, I know a lot of people don't know but like those shoes you're wearing they're like designers like they have 700 bucks like maybe you just like 
pump them up for like little things like that uh because a lot of things are like people that only certain people know um but um that's yeah that's one like good strategy to always start with a video where they feel more comfortable with or, or you know yeah just get like, them maybe rolling. they yeah or maybe yeah you just have to know them like stalk their instagram like look at their story see what they're doing uh because you want you don't want to the worst thing you can do is to go in cold and like not really knowing anything about the client so i sometimes call myself a professional stalker so i'll go into your like if, I, if you were my client i'll go on your instagram um uh, and just stalk everything until like as, as long as i can go down on your on your profile and uh, I'll Google you. I'll see your name. I'll find your LinkedIn. I, mostly, I'm just looking for a podcast too. If you have any, um, and just watch them on forex speed. There's an extension on on on, on Chrome for a speed something where you can put whatever uh, speed on, on the video that you want. So I usually do four x. So I'm just well, walking. Talk to me about that. I'm I watch a lot of stuff on two x. And I mean, mm. if a person is a normal talker, two x is fairly quick. What are you able to pull out on Forex speed? And what are you looking for? It definitely depends on the person and how they talk. Because uh, some people, like Robert Greene, for example, one of my favorite authors, he speaks slow. So if yeah. you put that guy on four or four X, it's like a it's like a two X two point two X point two twenty. I don't know. It's, it's like it's, it's not truly four X uh, yeah. in comparison to the average person. Someone like Grant Cardone, it might be like too fast. Um, yeah. So I like, but usually when I do four X. I'm not there to really look at your, uh, listen or watch your podcast for entertainment. I'm there to find like what stands out. So, and there are certain trigger phrases that you say, like could be anything money related. Like I, I made half a million dollars doing this or like this person scammed me or like, yeah, my way, my wife hated when I did this or like, you're going to, like people hated me when I did this. Like usually you're looking for, an intro to a sentence that we're like, you're going to pay attention. Sometimes it's stories, but it's like drama driven. Um, sometimes some, something shocking. So that's kind of what you're, if you're doing something for Forex, you're kind of looking for that shocking statement that makes you pause and be like, all right, let's dive deep more into this. And then I'll play it in like maybe two X. Uh, Cause Forex, it is like pretty fast to comprehend sometimes. Uh, but if you're listening to something really fast and then you go to like half as fast, like two X, it doesn't, it's still fast, but it's not as, it's, it feels normal. <laughs> it, like, it's training becomes, your brain to move faster. Yeah. And, uh, and like someone like me who like literally watches thousands of, I mean, at this point, thousands of hours now, but like minutes, like 60 minutes to two hours of content a day. Like I'm always, I don't have time to waste when it comes to really getting to know like what this podcast is about. It's like, no, I just want the nuggets. I just want the, the goal that, that I can clip out. Like, um, and I do that all the time with like other podcasts that are not our clients. I'm like always looking for inspiration and people that, mm. that can ask really good questions. Like two podcasts that are really, really good to study how they phrase questions to the guest. Uh, one is the Ice Coffee Hour from uh, yeah, um, Graham Stephan. Mm -hmm. Like they have such a, they ask really good questions. They have like curious tone to their, to their interviewing. They're like little kids. I know nothing. And, and they're always like, just squeezing as much detail and info from the client. And they talk a lot about feelings. It's like, so how did you feel when you bought your first house? Or like, how did you feel when you started your first business? Like, oh, your partner, your partner betrayed you. Like, how did that make you feel? Um, it's like, they're, they're kind of asking curious questions that, that a friend would probably ask you like that too. Um, so that's one really, really good podcast. Both Jack and, and uh, Steph and, like do an amazing job at that. So kudos to them. And then the other one is uh, my first million. Um, yeah, Sam. I forgot the name of what they do. But like that, yeah, like the the titles of the videos are always great. Uh, they're just kind of like two bros just talking and talking cool, talking like get techie stuff, but like in a cool way. Like because they don't make it like so professional. They're like, so what do you think if we made like a like the Tinder of like just only people that had iPhones though, no Androids. Like, like they're always very curious like that's like the tone that they have too but they're like more mature because they're actually successful business wise um so they don't all those guys are crazy like they're always talking big numbers yeah yeah so like they they make those complex money topics especially app world stuff like very simple to understand because they i i don't know i know one of them sold a company um it was so a copywriter. Sometimes it refers like oh yeah 
He was a copywriter yeah. that sold it for like, I think it was like 30 million. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, um, something wild like that. But they talk so casual. Um, I, I really like them. Like they, they, they are someone to study, not, not just what questions they're asking, but like what uh, phrasing are they using? Because you can use that as templates for your intros to your videos or have your director or video guy ask you those things. So that would be like a, a hack, I guess. Um, Mr. Beast, like anything with him, is a, he's someone that I study a lot because he's a psycho when it comes to videos. Right. Like he's very data-driven and uh, he's all about retention and like making sure that he always has attention, uh, as much attention from the viewer as possible. He, everything he does is designed to get attention. So knowing that, I'm like, that guy's spending millions of dollars on attention. So what is he doing? What is he saying? And if you notice, like all his things are exaggerated, numbers everywhere, always exact phrases. Um, he's like Mother Teresa, he's getting given away thing. So he's winning people over by being someone that cares for other people. So he shows that through money uh, or just, you know, the unexpected of like, yeah, I'm a Walmart. I'm just going to give somebody a million dollars to this briefcase. And they, if they say I won it or, or like I'm going to give it to another person. Um, it's kind of very like reality TV based where it's like, predictable but you still want to watch um like uh yeah reality tv in general is like a really good thing to study too um and and as you probably noticed like i'm not really talking about uh creators themselves it's more like long like people that can just have conversations Mm -hmm. yeah and uh speakers on stages like if you ever go to an event like think pay attention to the person that was very clear with their delivery or like it made you feel something uh, and you didn't get bored, basically, because <laughs> a lot of speakers, they're amazing people, but just what they talk about, like, they don't know how to talk about it in a cool way, um, especially like real estate, especially. It's a it's such a it can be a boring topic uh, unless you're like playing the game, like buying houses, dealing with contractors and stuff, then it matters a lot more to you. Um I just funny, like, uh, I made you at that Pineda event, which is all majority is real estate people. I was like, I don't, I still haven't bought a house or anything. So right. I'm like, I haven't done any real estate transactions. Um, yet I'm here guiding real estate people to, to talk better, but I think it's really good too. Cause like, I don't know that market, like in and out, I don't have like, I don't have the experience that made me, made, made be, maybe makes me blind to certain things. Like I just yeah. take them from granted. Yeah. Uh, which which is which can be beneficial or can be beneficial depending i do a lot of research so that that's my strength i geek out on like going down rabbit holes if you tell me you can buy uh commercial properties and not pay taxes ever like i'm gonna spend probably five hours in one day just like going down a deep rabbit hole as to how to do it what are the laws where what states to do it in um who has done this before so i can like validate that this is true like all that stuff so what what impact has interviewing these successful people had on you in life oh man it's like i feel like i cheated life it's like the the biggest cheat code was to hang out with these guys they're my friends so um i mean the biggest thing is just like realizing that no matter how successful they are they're just normal people um the biggest trait that all of them have is that they can just work non-stop like without emotionally having an impact on that they're like I want to make a million dollars. Like I'll work straight for 10 days because it just needs to get done. Like they don't complain about it. They don't say like, Oh, it sucks. It's like, it's just what needs to get done. They're kind of very stoic in that sense where they just know it has to get done and they just get it done. Like it's, and and they use their, their money and, and people they know to get further. Like if, and that's one thing they don't do is they don't waste time, like trying to master everything. I know a lot of books say it and stuff, but like, talking in the flesh with the people that actually have accomplished these financial successes, like you realize that like, yeah, they do use money to buy the right employees, buy the right companies. Like they're good at one thing and then everything else, like they hire people that are better suited for those situations. And sometimes they try multiple people because it's not a culture fit. That's been like a big thing. Like they're very also aware of what their relationship they want with certain companies or employees is so it has to be a they have to like the per, the people they're working with got to be a fit luis this has been incredible like i hope we get to have another conversation this was 
Like I, I literally usually take a page or two of notes. I think I have six <laughs> pages. Um, this has been phenomenal. Awesome. Like, thank you. And I know like you're usually on the other side of the camera, but thank you for, you know, hopping on with us guys. If you're listening, like you're going to have like literally a hundred things that you could take notes on, but pick at least one, right? Share it with somebody who knows they can hold you accountable. Take action because freedom's acquired one action at a time. And if you take these steps day by day, before you know it, you'll be living a life of freedom. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one.